Okay, the concept of the golf swing. In golf, there's lots of myths and illusions. We're going to cover some of them off and clear some of them up. Um, what I've got here is an area to explain how the golf club works or the geometry of the golf club. And we also need to realize how we create the energy or the power to hit the golf ball. Um, the golf club basically, if we line up over the ball, I've got a ball here and I've got this ball. What this ball does is signify the angle of this shaft. Some people call that a shaft plane, it's just the angle of the shaft. And you can see the ball's over there and I'm here. So therefore for me to swing this golf club, the club is going to work up and in, down and out. Up and in. Now a lot of you have read that and know that, but you've got a misconception of how to do that. So if you imagine this golf club, it's got a laser beam in this end, or a light, a beam of light, and a laser beam in this end of the beam of light, and I'm standing in the middle of a football, rugby, or hockey pitch. Here's the centre line, this is the touch line. As I line up and place the club behind the ball, I assume my address position, and the angle of the shaft is basically going to come up to my belt buckle. I'll go through that in more detail further on. The key thing here is as I move the club away, along this board or shaft angle, the laser beam in the club head is tracking the touch line all the way to the corner flag. That corner flag goes to infinity until I get level with the ground. Once I get level with the ground, the laser beam in this grip end is now at the corner flag in infinity in that direction and he's now running along this touch line and I'm swinging to the top of the golf swing. The top here, my left arm's through the collar of my shirt, my hand's over my shoulder. But the bottom line is this, the laser beam is pointing along the touch line. And where most amateurs go wrong is you're trying to put this on the ball. And what you do is throw this laser beam at the ball and you're now over with the spectators. What a good player does is he uses this laser beam to come down along the touch line until we're level with the ground. Then he uses this laser beam to come in and meet the inside back quarter of the ball. He then carries on sending the laser beam up in along the touch line, but notice the club, <coughs> the club is coming inside. Once it's level with the ground, the laser beam in the grip end now comes round and becomes to a finish. With my right arm through the collar of the shirt, hand over the shoulder. <coughs> so I'm literally just swinging along the touch line, along the touch line, throw. Now that's where <coughs> the club or the laser beam's going. What's the, what's the club head doing though? So I swing that way, I'm going along the touch line, but you can see the club head is coming a long way inside that line, all the way to the top. Now from here I'm going down and out. So in effect, the club is taking on a, an arc. So I've got my touch line here, I'm swinging the light along the touch line, but the club is now coming down along this arc. I meet the ball, inside back quarter of the ball, and I go through. I feel I'm following this line that way. My body pulls me back round. Another way of looking at that is if I have this hoop, you see where my hands are? As I swing back, my hands are going around the hoop, but my hoop is staying even with the base of that uh, block of wood, my shaft board. And I come back down, my hands are moving backwards and forwards, but the hoop is staying on line with that. Now where amateurs go wrong a lot of the time is they're trying to swing this club around on the inside. If you swing the club on the inside, that's like taking this hoop and twisting the hoop. Then I've got to twist the hoop back again. So the key is to swing up, left arm through the collar of the shirt, roughly hands over the shoulder, and then back down. If we do that, take this line, the touch line, and here, you can sum golf up by, as long as you swing the club through this area here, you're going to hit a pretty good shot. If the ball was in the, underneath here, I'm always staying underneath that because I'm using the laser beams to stay in that position. What most amateurs do, they're too worried about getting the club head on the ball, and straight away that club swings out and over the top. So the geometry quite simple, that club is swinging on an arc on an incline plane. If I'm playing baseball rounders, I'm swinging on an arc on a horizontal plane. 
the London Eye is an arc on a vertical plane. Where, if you like, somewhere between the London Eye and baseball and rounders, and this club is working around that arc, back and through. Now again, I'll do some more technical stuff at the back end of this DVD that will highlight that or be a bit more precise on that, but for learning the game, try and keep these concepts easy. Now, that's the geometry. What we now want is the power. How do we create the power to hit the golf ball? Well, if I place my hands together on the grip, my left hand's higher than my right. So if I hold my hands in front of me, I've got a triangle with my left side higher than the right. Now, I've got a radius my arm can move at, which is one power source. I've got muscle power when my right arm folds and extends like a piston. I've got my wrist that can cock and uncock. By the way, a cock is a vertical motion, not an angled motion. And that's important when we go further on. So all I'm literally doing is moving this back and through. This triangle is going back and through. What moves it back and through is my body pivot. Now pivot is basically what you're doing is turning freely around. If you imagine my spine as an axle, my hips and shoulders as the wheels. All we're doing as we stand over the golf ball is we're turning freely. The wheels are turning around the axle. Now, there's a little bit more to it than that, but let's keep it simple and get these concepts in your mind. So we're turning freely back and through around that. As I swing, if that was here, I'm turning around, I'm turning back through, and as I go through, this will drop onto my back leg. That's a pivot. So the pivot is what moves the power source. Now, in understanding how that triangle moves and the pivot, that's how we're going to control the power. If I want to hit a full shot and I'm holding a golf club, I'll hold up the top end of the grip because I've got the maximum radius. I've got my muscle power and I'd have a full stance. Because by having a full stance, I can use a full pivot to move the power and apply the power in and through the ball. One thing to understand here, just now I said you go through and you're aiming at the inside back ball to the ball. Not only aim the inside back ball to the ball, the club face is slightly open. If your concept is to deliver the club head squarely into the back of the ball, we've just established we're swinging an arc. If I swing around this arc and deliver the club head squarely into the back of the ball, as I go around, carry on around my arc, where's the ball go? It will go off to the left. If I come down on this plane and meet the inside back quarter of the ball and swing through, it would go straight. Why is that? That's because another illusion or myth. The myth is the ball is the bottom of the arc. Well, just think about that for a minute. We're swinging on an arc and the ball's the bottom of the arc. How come good players take a divot? If the ball was the bottom of the arc, it wouldn't take a divot. What happens in the golf swing is this. If we address with that Y, the low point in your golf swing, when you swing around the arc, is underneath your left shoulder. What hits the ball, here we've got radius. When we hit the ball, we have flail or leverage. If this is a lever on my left arm, as I swing back, I get a second lever. Another way of looking at it is I swing back, this arm flails, or it's lag, you might have heard the word lag. What now happens is I use the right sequence down, maximum leverage is when my arm and that club is straight. We have, this is called a long moment arm, this is called a short moment arm. And all we're doing is swinging this back with our pivot, and then sequencing it, so as we come through, the low point is here. Now if that's the low point where maximum power is, we need to get the ball before that. If we get it after that, we've got no leverage. So we play the ball somewhere between our armpit and our left ear. With most beginners, I tend to get them to play off the emblem of their shirt or the collar of the shirt. Um, if you're doing things consistently, you'll get a consistent shot and then you can tweak that position slightly to get the flight that you want to get. So understand this, when you address the golf ball, if I use this rod as a guide, as I address the golf ball, that rod should be on my left shoulder, which is my low point the ball I'm eating before that. So there's my address position. Next thing, if I swing back and come through, I've created some legs. So when I come into the ball, I'm eating the ball here, my hands 
this lever's catching up, ready for this second lever to crunch the ball as I come through. I'm hitting that with leverage, power, mass, and speed. If I'd address the ball up here, all the leverage is gone. Or, if I address it here and use the wrong sequence to try and deliver it back to where I started, wrong concept again, this club's at this angle and all the leverage is gone. So I understand whether you want to call that lag, flail, or leverage, that's what we want to do. Now we'll discuss as we go on how we sequence that together. I'll cover it very shortly here. As I address the ball, imagine there's a ball here, I then take my start, it's off my left shoulder. As I turn away, club arm shoulder goes away, then the hip, then the shoulder, then the knee, then the foot, if you're not very supple in my case. Now what amateurs do is they want to get the club on the ball and they throw the club. Club arm shoulder again and meet the ball something like this. Come across it and lift up. So again, get this in your head. Your friends will say you lifted up or you swung too fast. You didn't, you did the wrong sequence. If you can process that in as the wrong sequence, process that in, that's going to get you moving quickly. What a good player would do is club arm, shoulder, hip, knee, foot, and reverse the sequence, which creates the lag. This is here first, bang, that catches up. As we do that, we then take the ground after the ball and go through. So the ball is not the bottom of the arc, the left shoulder is the bottom of the arc. So I do that at this angle on this tube. What you'll see here, that tube, to hit that tube I'm coming from the inside back quarter because I'm going through that before I get to my low point. So I put this in the ground, if I'm coming into this, if that's my low point I'm hitting the ball here on the way to my low point. It's almost like a clock here, that arc, the ball's at six, sorry the low point's at six, the ball's at seven. I'm hitting the ball at seven on the way to six. That's why I feel I'm going out that way. That's why the club face is open. So by the time we get here, we're square. So the low point of the golf swing is underneath the left shoulder, and you must play the ball before that. If you play the ball too far back, let's say an ideal shot would be to take a divot about two rushes of bacon thick. If you play the ball too far back, you're gonna to go too deep into it, you're gonna chunk the shot, and you've got a pork chop or you'll make a manipulation to try and get to your two rashes of bacon. 